Every week we have uh, different segments we do. I, I try to put the groups together, but not a whole lot of change in the groups this week. Some horses racing today and throughout the week. That would be new, which would be worth mentioning, but they haven't done that yet. Two-year-olds you guys got to see. Anything that's needed to be talked about is talked about inside the stable, outside the groups this week. Now, I will continue to talk about the groups next week. We have a number of them to talk about um, as our final group of the season, the New Year's group that was formed on New Year's Eve. Uh, it will close this coming week, and we will talk about that. A number of questions come in. David asked a wonderful question about HST on Stormont Wizard and Harvard or Stormont Wizard and Harvard Yard. More of a question for our accountant and for Wendy. My understanding is Stormont Wizard was bought before we claimed him. That money was put together in American funds. We claimed the horse. He is in the states. There's no shares for me being sold, being transferred. Um, and when it comes to when it comes to people selling shares of Harvard Yard on the private market, they are supposed to collect and remit the HST if they have applicable HST numbers, whereas Harvard Yard was purchased, but the shares are being sold through us, a Canadian company, and we are required to collect and remit that. So, a little technical, and if, if it wasn't completely clear, send Wendy, um, send Wendy an email about that. She can answer it more directly. Or if she needs help, she can certainly call our accountant or email our accountant, Greg, and he can most definitely answer it for you. Now, let's get to some of the horse racing questions. Love the drone with the yearlings. Is it possible to add the race horses? Every year we get this, and we try to sometimes, but it's incredibly hard. And this year it's impossible because many of our race horses are gone stateside. When we are training our three-year-olds down, they've all been at different speeds except for the Ohio horses that came back at the same time. So we could have a drone at some point in the next month or so when my jazz mama knows best, all those Ohio horses starting to train down together are training. We could have a drone. Whereas we have one, my heart Hanover who's getting closer to the races, hopefully. And, uh, that being that the races will hopefully start up. And also, um, frilly fringes who's been ready to go. Um, whereas you have a horse like, uh, Fox Valley Britsko, we're not going to be training him hard at the track. When it comes to our half mile track in the winter, we don't want to be going super fast miles with these horses uh, and they're all going at different speeds. So it's very difficult to really put together a, let's just say a, a program, a, um, a day of droning for the racehorses. But uh, possibly in the future, we could throw a drone set in from Jason's side where all those Ohio breads who virtually are going the same speed are in together. That is possible, and we'd be happy to bring that to you. Um, is <laughs> If you had a do-over in 2020, what will that be, and what we've learned about training horses? So the one thing we've learned is that it continues to change, right? How we train our horses, how we treat the horses, and especially with the way the breed itself is changing. You look 10 years ago, if you had a two-year-old that could pace 55, 56, you had a decent two-year-old. Now you might not have a grassroots horse, and in most jurisdictions you wouldn't. So um, how do we train our horses? How's it changed? Not the, the core of how we train our horses has not changed in the least. We train them hard. We train them often. We train them in sets. I don't believe in wasting time in the sense that just go out and let them canter and play around. I don't do that. I don't, I don't like it at all, and I think it's a disservice to the horse. We want to go out. This is training camp, virtually, is what it is. And we want to go out and make sure that our horses do their job the best they can. Sure, I'll, I'll, and when we talk about a horse like Garden State Dio making breaks, I don't feel the same necessity to fix what I know. We, we can put hobbles on her and make her trot, but I would like to see her mature as a horse first. I don't feel she's ready to be pushed and pushed and pushed, whereas I believe that speed is in there. It's just a matter of just taking your time. Horses like World for Two and Almost Their Boss, I don't want to really clamp down on them and push hard until the corks are almost off because I want to make sure that they stay sound and they don't have any, any bumps in the road, so to speak. Whereas other horses, like you heard me say Prairie Fire, he will be working hard this week because I believe he can, he should, and I believe he's making some mistakes that maybe are precipitated by some shoeing or equipment. We're going to make those changes, and as I said, I believe you'll see a much different horse the next time. As far as do-overs, I don't, I don't like the do-over 2020, you know, hindsight 2020 game. If if you're going to look, if you're going to put your your hindsight, you know, glasses on, um, you're going to be very disappointed, right? These are horse races. You know, ask any baseball player how many bats would you like back, you know. 
hockey player, how many times would you like to have the puck, you know, instead of passing a puck or instead of, you know, you hit the post or, you know, you just can't second guess yourself in that manner. Uh, I can think of a number of things that I wish had done differently. You know, as far as a driver, you do it all the time. One, as soon as you, as soon as I saw this question, the first thing that popped into my mind was when I drove Jazzy Judy terribly in Delaware. I wish I had that one back uh, because I knew better. But these are things that happen all the time during racing. So there's a number of things. Rest assured, I could write you a novel of things I wish I did better or differently in my life. But at the end of the day, I turned out where I am right now. So I guess I can't really complain too much. Uh, is somebody interested in a turn, attending the Gold Cup this year? Uh, anything you should do? Listen, there is a million things you can usually do on Prince Edward Island. Now, is everything going to be open in August in North America? I don't know. I That's way above my pay grade. And, I, and to be quite frank, I don't think anybody can answer that. Let's assume yes. If it is, then yeah, there's a million things you can do. You can golf in a million different courses. You can go deep sea fishing. You can go to races twice a day, all all week long. There is a number of things. I, I'm obviously biased and always am because I am an Islander first and foremost. But I do believe for one full week of racing, it is the best place on earth to be. I've never been to the Elite Lop, so I guess that's a little unfair. But I know I've been to a number of places and been to and in a number of races. Being in Prince Edward Island, just because of the atmosphere, right? Everybody's happy. There's so many tourists there. There's restaurants everywhere. There's every everything you want to do is in Prince Edward Island. So um, maybe circle back closer to August, the third week of August. But for now, let's just assume that COVID-19 doesn't exist and everything will be open for 2021. If that's the case, then trust me when I tell you there is an infinite amount of things that you can do in Prince Edward Island for that week. Um, what else? Is Ohio having the future generation stake race that we had raced? Um, we had raced in last year. <laughs> tried to, tried to race in for sure. Raced Roy Hill in it. Didn't get to race uh, well and down. I believe they are having it again. I can assure you they're going to change the rules of that race. Um, and I heard rumblings of a trotting side of it also. Rest assured, if they do have a trotting side, we'll have horses in it. I mean, uh, every year we tend to have some talented trotters for um, for Ohio especially. And I don't think this year is any different looking at the horses that I saw yesterday on the track. Uh, I'm very interested in what's going to take place. As far as... The series goes uh, in Ohio. Does let me. I'll I'll end with this one. The stable. The stable should buy insurance for some of its horses. I'm not buying insurance for our horses. Uh, we can put you in touch with uh, people that will sell you percentages for your insurance. You can insure your three percent or five percent or one percent or nine percent of your horses. We did have an affiliate insurance agent that was a client of ours. He's not anymore, but I don't think there's any reason. He just, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't for him. So I think, um, so I think uh, we'll be able to help you if you want to insure any horses, but I can assure you the stable.ca doesn't, it doesn't have any horses on its register right now that it is going to insure. I just, you know, when you look back, I look back at all the horses we have and everything we went through uh, paying added insurance fees, I just, I don't really have much of an appetite for it. And finally, what is Amy's background and how did you guys meet? Well, Amy's background is she was with, she was uh, in horses for a long time with her father. Um, I actually knew Amy a long time ago. She was dating a gentleman that was a friend of mine, still is. And um, it's just funny how things happen, right? Um, I ended up, I was married. I ended up divorced and, and separated uh, for quite a while, um, for quite a while. And when it came to, um, Amy, she was single for quite a while and we were just friends. You know, we ended up going out to dinner a couple of times and maybe going to the movies once. And, um, you know, it's, I guess you hear this story all the time. You know, it's just always better if you've, I guess, if you've known each other for a while and geez, I knew Amy for a long time before we ended up uh, a couple and, um, it just, it's been great from day one. Amy's a, I've known a lot of people and obviously this is somebody that I'm married with and plan on spending the rest of my life with. And it's very difficult to imagine, uh, anybody working as hard as Amy. I mean, she's raised the kids with me. She was there 
you know, when racing almost failed in Ontario, when I was forced into politics and the stress that I was under, we were all under um, at that time. You know, we just had Ava. We were new parents. We do so much. Uh, there's so much glue there that, uh, you know, to say I had the utmost respect for my wife is, is an understatement. Uh, she's a hard worker. She's She's been the backbone of the stable since day one, done everything to ensure that we succeed. Uh, and we both put our hearts and our souls into the stable.ca. And, and I hope and pray and assume that it is uh, it is seen because it's uh, it's definitely a labor of love, both our marriage and what we do here at the stable. So I, I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, rest assured, uh, Amy's background is solid in horse racing and um, just a real hard worker. So with that, you are now all caught up. That's your questions for this week. Oh, why do horses wear tongue ties? To keep their tongue from getting the back of their mouth and shutting their air off. If they get their tongue over the bit, it's incredibly hard to steer them. Uh, a lot of people wait and then they end up fighting with them. We put them on from day one and it never seems to be a problem. So I apologize. I almost missed that last question. Why do horses wear tongue ties? Pretty simple. Just so you can steer them better and they don't end up shutting their air off. Anyway. That is your questions for this week. I hope you guys are all safe, all happy, all having a great day. Take care.